yikes big yikes to this hi cuties so today we are reviewing some stuff and we're also going to be talking a bit more about my surgery and we're going to be doing some taste testing of stuff here that you probably can't see very clearly but they are protein shakes because i'll be on a liquid diet afterwards um after the surgery i'll be on one for two days prior to it but i need to figure out which protein shakes i actually will like and so we're gonna try a sampling of these and see what i like while we review books and talk a bit more about the surgery what we're gonna be doing is i'm gonna try to give short summary reviews of the books that I read in September and in between them we'll be taste testing or I'll be sharing a fact with you about the surgery and stuff. I'll have more detailed stuff coming out but I just wanted to combine everything because I am very close to my surgery right now. I am filming this on October 8th. I have four days people and I am like losing my mind with all the prep and stuff that I've had to do and I'm not doing great about like explaining it how I wanted to explain it because I don't have time to sit down and edit and everything is not fully entered my brain even so I can't even explain it well all the things that I have to do. <laughs> I have to keep referencing this guidebook. It's not sticking in the brain, especially all the dietary stuff, which is like, you know, the important stuff afterwards so I don't mess up myself and, you know, end up in the hospital or something. But anyway, let's, let's go on forward. So quick stats of September. It was not a bad month. I still didn't finish everything I was supposed to in September, but they are carrying over in October. Like I said before, I know in my TBR video I said I would have finished Rebel. I did not. Rebel went on to the October TBR. I did just finish it though. In total, I read 11 books. I read three contemporaries, two fantasies, one mystery, two sci-fi, one historical fiction, and two horror, uh, which was about 3,951 pages and 82.5 hours. My average star rating was about 3.68, so it wasn't a bad month. I did have some really great books and I had some bad books, so let's talk about the first one. Luckily this was a good book. And it's indie! So, the first book that I read was Raise the Stakes by O.E. Tierman. This is the third book in the Aces High Joker's Wild series. It's the last one that I own. There are two more books in the series and I wanted to pick them up at Mile High Con, but they couldn't show up, so I have to wait for their signing event on October 26th to go get the next two books. But I absolutely love this series. It is a very inclusive series. It is military sci-fi, which is, again, I say this all the time every time I talk about this book. It's not a genre I like, but I love it with this, and that's probably because of all of the queer representation and the diversity and just the found family plot or character driven plot that we really have here so that's what I really love about this series not so much all the military stuff in it but I do love everything else about it so highly recommend picking up this series I don't want to tell you everything about the plot or anything because this is the third book and you'd get terribly terribly spoiled you should pick it up it's great check them out that was the first book so we're gonna try our first protein shake that my mum picked up. And I don't know if I can have this one. No, yes I can. There's no sugars in it. So that's the biggest thing for the protein shakes is making sure there's low sugar, um, a low sugar to protein ratio. So protein has to be a lot. So this has 25 grams of protein. It is the vanilla cream flavor and it says genuine zero sugar. I don't know if you guys can see. Genuine zero sugar of muscle milk. Um, yeah, non-dairy, wait. What does that mean? <laughs> Half the time it's non-dairy means it's like almond milk or something. It is not. It's a pro it's a milk protein. Okay, here we go. I normally hate protein shakes. Okay, it doesn't smell too bad. It's not bad, but it tastes weird. It tastes like something in my childhood. Like when my sister had her had her giant My Little Pony set from the 80s, like there was a perfume in it that you could attach to the My Little Pony house thing. It tastes like that perfume smelled. I don't hate it. I was really expecting to hate it because it's vanilla. And I, okay, I don't hate this one. So I'm going to seal this back up and put it in the fridge so that it doesn't go bad. Yay, success! I really thought I was gonna hate that one. Okay, we'll see who else I, I end up hating on this. I didn't hate that. 
I've hated a lot of other ones in the past. Like my doctor had me um, drinking Ensure for a while, but they were dairy, so he had to be on the plant one, and I hated that one. It was nasty as hell. So I already know I won't have that one. But okay, next book. Here we go. The next book is Lord Lost by Darren Sean. This was one of Fee's picks for me that ended up on the main TBR from the game that we played a long time ago. And this is the first book in the Demonada. And I did not expect how horrific the beginning was. And that's the thing about this book is I liked the beginning. I, it lost me halfway through. The main character, like, I really didn't care about him. Um, his name's Grubs, which I'm just like, the names in this, I'm like, where are these names from? But I just didn't connect with him. And the like one female character seemed to be there just for gratuitous things. And I didn't appreciate that at all. And I just didn't care about the other characters. I, I wasn't a big fan of the twist of what was happening to or why things were happening this way and why these horrific things happened to his family and his friend and I'm just very uh conf not confused but I just didn't it didn't vibe with me and I feel bad because Fee loves this series um but I don't know if I'll continue reading it just because I, I didn't really the writing itself seemed really juvenile so I didn't like it, I'm sorry. And now let's try another <laughs> another protein shake that maybe I'll hate. Now this is, I'm super nervous about this. So my mom went and picked up a few of these protein shakes and then I just got a few more. Try, and this one is cinnamon roll flavor. You can see it's cinnamon roll. I'm terribly afraid of this one. So this one has one gram of sugar, but 30 grams of protein. So that's a really good ratio for it. I can't smell anything. <laughs> Doesn't have a smell. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's bad. It's like just drinking water with cinnamon in it. <sighs> that's not a good one. That's, that's a bad one. We're gonna the brand my doctor wanted me to get. Premier Protein. <laughs> I don't like that. That's like having a little bit of cinnamon challenge in your mouth and I'm not a fan. <sighs> well, it paired with the books, I guess. Lord Lost drinks this, all right? Another book that was from the Fee TVR was The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This big chunk of a book. It was like, how many hours? It was like a 28 hour audio book. But I did really enjoy this one. It was really, really good in that it's it's a story within a story. So the main character of Kvothe is telling his story to a kind of, to Chronicler, um, who is what you can guess he is. Um, and it's, it's very interesting seeing Kvothe tell his childhood stories as he grows up and you're still experiencing it in like real time as you're reading it and then it has these breaks where you remember oh yeah he's telling these stories um but i really really enjoyed that i love his backstory it's it's just such a rich character and all of the characters are very rich and well formed and it's a beautiful story it's got so many interesting different parts to it i will say i forgot about the bad guys because we went so long without talking about them that when something came up with them again i was like who what why do i care so that was my notch of a star there is that it's just so long there that you forget what we're doing here <laughs> but i did really really enjoy this a lot and I, I get the hype around it I mean it's a really famous book and I'm just I, I will be continuing this series I have to because it's on the official TBR so we'll see when I get to the wise man's feet -er. but here we go next one so this is another muscle milk it's also villain little cream but this just has slightly less protein in it oh this one has 20 grams my mom got it so 20 grams of protein, zero sugars. It's just slightly less. But if it tastes like the other one, it should be fine. Oh wait, did I shake this? Yeah, it's fine, it tastes like the other one. I'm gonna go put it in the fridge, it's good. Huh, are we pairing, is this? 
Is this foreshadowing? Oh no, are you gonna suck? Because then, okay, these two might be good and then this one might suck based on what's coming. The next book I read was fabulous. It wasn't, I wouldn't say fabulous, but it was like, it was so good. And that is Solitaire by Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman, as you know, may, may, maybe you know, maybe you don't, is the author of Heartstopper, as well as Loveless, which is one of my absolute number one favorite books of all time. And Solitaire is right up there. Solitaire is fantastic. It touches, I didn't realize Solitaire is in the Heartstopper universe, or like, I think all of her books are, maybe? But this one definitely is because this stars Charlie's older sister, Tori, and it's like, it's already in the established Heartstopper universe, so this is like after some parts of Heartstopper, so it's really interesting to see how the graphic novel um, interweaves, not inter, it hasn't really interwoven yet. We're like further than where Heartstopper has gone in this. So it's like you, if you've already read Heartstopper, you're like, oh great, you already know who a lot of these characters are, but you don't really know Tori's story. I was really nervous going into this because it says on the cover here, let it focus, the catcher in the rye for the digital age. I hate the catcher in the rye so much. So I was so nervous going into this, but I loved it. It really emoted a lot of things of my own angsty teenage times and a lot of stuff that was going on. I did kind of get annoyed with the twist that does happen. I was like, it was really easy to see, but at the same time, I'm just like, that's the motivation. All right. Alice Oseman's writing is just fantastic. It just brings out all of the emotions for you. You may cry while you read this book. I did, and I don't cry much when I read books, but this one, this one got me feeling things. And I listened to it on audiobook and it was an excellent audiobook. So check out Solitaire. And we're gonna try Boost Max women. Here, here, I haven't actually been showing you guys pretty well, but so this is a rich chocolate one. Actually, all, all the rest of them are some kind of chocolate. Let's shake it. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it. Okay, okay, that's trash. Okay, so this one is one gram of sugar, 30 grams of protein. I hate when they do this. This is the worst. They do this on my milk because I'm lactose intolerant. So these are, is this plant-based? Shit, I didn't look at the ingredients. All that does say it contains milk ingredients, but I have a lactate pill if I need it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. If I chug it, I can do it but I definitely don't like it. Nope, 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 aftertaste is even worse. Yeah. All right. Okay, I don't know what that was just now, but okay. This is the point where I fell off my TBR because I had some books that dropped in my Libby and I'd had them on hold for months and months and months and they still said that they had months to go, but apparently, never mind. They're here. So the first one is Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the sequel to Aurora Rising. I couldn't remember it. The beautiful cow on the cover. And I I do really like this trilogy. Or so, I mean, so far, I haven't read the, the last one because the last one's not out yet. This is a very character-driven story. It's multiple POVs. The audiobook is what I highly recommend because it is a full cast and you get some sound effects and stuff. And there's a lot of cool things happening. Now, I definitely liked Aurora Rising more than Aurora Burning because this one, there's this thing, okay? Excuse me while I do my hair thing. Um, there is a thing in this called the pull. And it's, I, I found it to be quite the cop out to get two people in a romantic relationship with each other that I, I, in other circumstances, they really would not. And the only thing that's really doing that is the pull. Um, so Aurora herself and this beautiful boy here end up in this kind of, inst it's not fully insta-love because it's insta-love for him, but not for her, but there, it doesn't really give us enough of that 
tensiony moments. It's just kind of, they're really into it together. And they spend a lot of time in this one together and their relationship grows what seems to be very fast to the outside world, but it's not because there's a weird time displacement thing. But anyway, the poll I feel is kind of lazy and I don't like it because I don't like relationships that that's what they're built on. They're not built on anything actual mutual like trust or, you know, commonalities or enemies to lovers kind of thing where you understand and you, you start getting in the mind of the other person. It's just this, well, there it is. That's the person I love and there's no real explanation for it and it kind of drives me insane. Still, it's cool because it's alien stuff and alien culture so that it doesn't have to make sense for humans, but it was so forefront of, of this story that I was kind of like, okay, we get it, we get it, you know. Everything else about this book I really, really loved. I still love Finn. Finn is the best. Finian's my boy and nothing will change that. So I I really like a lot of the characters in this and I, I'm really, really nervous about the next one because boy does this leave off on a cliffhanger, all right? If you are not a cliffhanger person, don't read this one yet until the full trilogy is out because this is killing me. Killing me. What are you gonna do? I don't know how to pronounce this. Is this own? Oh, oh only what you need. O-W-Y-N. Owen? I don't know how you actually pronounce it. So this is a cookies, cookies and cream bliss is what it says. And that just sounds weird, but it's got, okay. So this is probably the worst one of them. It's four grams of sugar and 20 grams of protein, but it's not, not, not bad enough that I can't have it. Okay. It definitely smells cookies and cream less. Oh, that's the worst one. Oh, that's terrible. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Oh, get it out. Oh my god, that's the worst. Oh my god, do I hate chocolate in these things now? Am I purely a vanilla girl now? The vanilla ones were fine. They were great. That's horrendous horrendous as the pool. <laughs> right. Oh, it's still there. Next book is Reign of the Fallen. Oh, it's so, it's such a white cover. It's hard to, let me, let me do this. Yeah, Reign of the Fallen. There we go. Slightly better, but not great. Anyway, this is by Sarah Glenn Marsh, and I was really looking forward to this because it's marketed as bisexual necromancer. And we're all like, okay. And then I read it and I was like, no thanks. I was really disappointed in this. Number one, I never trust established relationships in the beginning of books. I don't trust them. They never work out. Something bad happens. They break up or someone dies and one of those things happens in this without spoiling you horribly for it. But I got so mad at this book. Literally every single person that we meet in this book except for like two people are madly in love with the main character everybody loves her everybody wants to bang her and i'm like guys just because she's bisexual does not mean a she wants to bang everybody or b everybody wants to bang her what the hell <laughs> she's established as the king's favorite necromancer and the reason is because she's the sparrow and she's the best at navigating the dead world place. And the whole time you're reading, you're just like, is she the best? I don't really see any reason why she's the best. There's no foundation in that character, in my opinion, at least. And then, so the thing happens where the established relationship is gone and then we bring in the, the partner's sister. And this is of course how you know that she's bisexual because now she's gonna get with the sister and the sister who is gay and has also had some, her established relationship has also ended poorly. Okay, they died. There's your spoiler. Her boyfriend died. 
her girlfriend died and now they're hanging out and they don't like each other at first but there's really it's so like that's the thing <sighs> This is how frustrating this book was. The whole path to suddenly they're in love with each other thing made no sense because they spend it arguing and hating each other the whole time. But there's no moment of like, oh, but I understand them or oh, okay. There's no right build up to it. And it was just like, oh. <sighs> and like, she has all these friends and she's also like kind of sleeping around with her, one of her best friends at the same time who for some reason is also, or the princess also really likes him, but whatever. And there's like drug abuse in this as well. Everything about this, I was just so frustrated with and I didn't like it. I'm mad because I wanted to like this book so much and I was just completely gutted. Nothing, I, I didn't like anything about this. I'm so mad. <laughs> Even the main, the main evil, like, you knew it was him, but, like, what? And I was kind of on his side. Like, I was kind of with the villain because the whole, whole, like, world building. For, sorry, I know I'm, like, touching my hair a lot right now, but that's because I'm trying to get it off my neck. Um, because I'm hot. Anyway, but, like, <laughs> the whole world is built around a king who constantly has to be killed and then brought back to life in case he turns into this evil shade demon thing because that's what happens to people but people who who die and then are brought back to life are always at risk of this and always have to wear a shroud like they can't experience their life anymore so what was the point what's the point of all of this why are the dead people ruling i'm with the villain on this one i'm not i'm sorry but like logically way more sense. Why are the dead <sighs> We're fine. The last one. I'm gonna hate this one because it's chocolate and I apparently hate chocolate now. Okay. Oh, I didn't <laughs> show you what it is. This is a quest. Quest one. Ooh, quest chocolate. 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. Here we go. I'm just prepared to hate this. Actually, okay, it's fine. It's mediocre, but I would drink it. I don't hate it. I'll save this one. These are gonna get poured down the sink, I can tell you that. <sighs> Thank you for bearing with me on this. The next book we read, thankfully, was... And that book was also not on the official TBR, but that was Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I loved this. It's another feminist Greek mythology retelling, and it's with Ariadne, which I was really excited about because Ariadne is in my book. Well, not the character herself, but a spider is named Ariadne in my book, my new book, Hispocat, Humane Society of Creatures and Cryptids. And that's why I was like, a book about Ariadne? Yay! Because I really like Ariadne in general. Um, but I, didn't, I never realized how horrible Ariadne really was treated in general, but, uh, and I did not know that she was the wife of, Di of Dionysus. Um, Dionysus, I can never say it right. I'm so sorry, Dionysus. Although I'm, you know, of all the Greek gods, you probably like me the least because I don't drink or smoke or drugs or do anything that you think is a good time. So, Artemis is my girl. A slave forever. Ariadne. Fantastic. It is a dual POV with Ariadne and her sister Phaedra. And Phaedra, I, I did not know anything about Phaedra, but I was like, girl, why you be the way you are a lot of the time. <laughs> and it's really, it's really, really sad, but it's a beautiful story. It's beautifully told. I, I really, I don't have complaints about this. I just really love this. I, I loved I'm, I'm just digging all of the feminist mythology, like, retellings we're getting because a lot of original mythology and stuff is so sexist. And the main point that this book makes that is so beautiful is that for all the men's wrongdoings, it's always the women who suffer. So, and that's like, you know how Zeus going around can't keep it in his pants and Hera always takes out her anger on the women that he's with. 
and it's and never Zeus and Zeus just gets to keep going on and on about it and that's what Ariadne really sees because she is the daughter of Oh, Pasiphae? I'm pretty sure it's Pasiphae. Now I'm saying it more, it's Pasiphae. Who was enchanted to fall in love with the bull and gives birth to the Minotaur. And it's... And so she's the sister of the Minotaur, which is... Is it Minotaur? I always... I should know. It's in my own book. But anyway, <laughs> Minotaur, Minotaur, uh, tomato, tomato. We'll go with that. So Ariadne is the Minotaur's sister and helps Theseus in the plot to kill the Minotaur through the labyrinth and everything if you don't know the original Greek myth. Definitely check it out because it's a really cool one, really interesting. Um, but I love how it plays against how the heroes of Greek mythology are shown to us and what they really were like. And all of the other characters, and especially like Daedalus, and you get Icarus in there a little bit, and <laughs> a little bit. We all know what happens to Icarus now, don't we? Have a lot of different stories being told, and how power corrupts. It's beautiful, but the main message of that: why are the women always the ones who have to suffer against the man's transgressions? It's just not. It's not right, and it's beautifully told. I love. I can gush about this book forever and ever, but you should just read it. Now that we've done that, um, we'll do a quick little, here's, here's what's going down for the surgery. So I recently just went and did my pre-op admission stuff, which I went and basically they did blood draws on me for more labs. They gave me a lowdown again of everything and I got an EKG, which was fine. And I, nothing really came out of it, I guess. I just know where the hospital is now. My hospital has valet parking. What? It's free valet parking. Weird, <laughs> but okay. Um, so we prep for everything there. I have more notes and everything. I have bought all the medicines. I have an entire tub of all the pills I'm gonna need to take. There's so much in here. There's fiber, we've got vitamin D, calcium, fish oil, B12, and then some are on my desk. So we have the biotin, a one a day supplement, or a, a multivitamin. Um, um, uh, <laughs> I, think, I think those are the biggest ones. Those are the biggest supplements that I have to be taking um, for all of this because it's so much. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can handle all of the pills in my tiny, tiny stomach after this is over. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm so shiny. I'm sorry. I worked all day, by the way. That is why I look like this. It is very late at night and I won't have any time because I work all the way up to my surgery. So... This is what you guys get. I'm so sorry. That was my, my pre-op stuff and we're preparing so we bought this stuff. I bought a mirror. Look, you can see yourselves in the mirror. There you go. There's a mirror. You can see my, my Spotify playlist I was playing. Spoopy vibe. I got a mirror so that I can take photos and chronicle this. I have a scale down here. My mom got me slippers. She bought me slippers and I'm like, wait, mom, I already have slippers. For some reason, my mom thought my dinosaur slippers weren't going to be appropriate for the hospital. I beg to differ. These are the best slippers. <laughs> That's a lot of what I've been doing is prepping and buying stuff and getting ready for everything. Okay, next book. So at the end of September, I went to WhimsyCon and was showcasing my book and stuff there, but I met some other really cool people and picked up a graphic novel, which is called A Journey with Strange Bedfellows. It's very shiny, so it's hard to see everything, um, but it is kind of a horror mystery uh, that pays tribute to classic monsters and stuff, or, okay, um, inspired by... Yeah, inspired by classic um, short stories. So we have inspired with The Dancing Partner by Jerome K. Jerome, A Wicked Woman by um, Jack London, uh, The Traveler's Story of a Terribly Strange Bed by Wilkie Collins, Goodman Brown by Nathaniel Hawthorne, Hector H. Monroe by The Music on the Hill, and Dracula's Guest by Bram Stoker. So all of the stories on the journey that we go through with this main character are a reflection of those. And I thought that was really well done. It's still weird to me because I don't read graphic novels very well um, because I do feel like pacing is so fast. Um, and this whole journey we're on is because the main character is in love with this other woman who keeps disappearing on him. And you're kind of trying to figure out why is she disappearing? What's going on with this? 
and it was it was weird there was one story in here where I'm still confused and it's very graphic I'm gonna warn you on that there is a rape scene kind of thing in here so fair warning to that um, but the first story in it was really really interesting and sad um, and then there's a twist at the end uh, where we get a little bit Beauty and the Beast with it and I, I like that so um, there's also supposed to be a game that they're trying to get funded for this, and there's a card game for it. There's a lot of really cool things that this author was making, and I thought she was really, really cool. So I'll, I didn't even say who it was by. I'm so sorry. Uh, Jan C.J. Jones, and illustrated by David Stoll. So I met Jan, and um, she's a lovely, lovely lady with a dark and twisted mind. <laughs> Next fun factoid about the bariatric surgery is I have been giving up um, all of the carbs and stuff and um, not protein I'm starting more protein um, and caffeine also cannot be consumed which is fine because I don't really drink a lot of caffeine anyway like I don't drink coffee I'm one of the easiest people for them to deal with because I don't smoke I don't drink I don't drink coffee I don't do drugs I don't do weed or anything like that I'm like so clean on this what's really interesting about this surgery I find for myself though is overall I'm actually very healthy like yes I have PCOS and I have asthma but my vitals are always perfect like my blood pressure they're always like God, your blood pressure is so freaking good and like I never have problems with like cholesterol or anything like that that a lot of skinny people do have so I just want to put it out there that I'm super healthy that way I'm unhealthy in other ways which is why we're doing this bariatric surgery and part of that is for PCOS part of that is actually for some bone stuff um, which I never really explained why I was doing the surgery and the other part of it is again my depression and a lot of that being associated with my body image and how I see myself so there's a lot of different factors into why I'm doing this surgery but also because dieting has never ever worked for me and I, there's no guarantee that bariatric surgery will work either but I definitely will lose some weight coming out because they're taking out a lot of weight in the organ itself so <laughs> I definitely feel like it will put me on a better path to what I need to accomplish because the part with dieting and stuff is that yes I need to try to eat less or anything but my stomach is huge and it's like I need more I need more I need more now um which fun other side note fun fact tangents um <laughs> there did you know it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain it's full I didn't what and that's probably a huge pro a huge part of my issues with gaining weight and stuff is because it takes that long for your stomach to send those signals what so there's your fun factoid for that I guess that was that was that factual I don't know we're going on next one we don't have to talk about too much because I did do a live show with this and you could watch it all on replay with Amanda and we read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I gave this book five stars I absolutely loved it it hit me way hard this is another book that I cried I cried a lot in September not just from reading but anyway um check out that live stream because we went off on it a bit we went not off but like we went on and on and on about this book there are spoilers in that live stream but we do clearly mark where they happen so check out that live stream to learn more about how i feel about the midnight library but i loved it i can tell you that right now next up is we're prepping because I only got two more books left so we're prepping for the surgery my surgery is in four days from the time that I'm filming this I don't know when this is going up this might be going up after I've had the surgery I don't know editing cue will tell you right here I have to start my clear liquid diet in two days so for two days I will be doing nothing but clear liquids and I have to work during this and I'm very nervous about this but I have to like clearly flush out everything there um, and then my surgery I will not be able to put anything in my stomach at 6 30 in the morning because it's six hours before your surgery you cannot have anything going into your body which will be difficult because I'm a person that likes to get up and drink something right away I'm always thirsty when I wake up and that sounds wrong I just mean water <laughs> I mean water or I mean juice. Um, so I have a lot of clear protein drinks already going on right now. 
that I already picked out months ago that I really, really like. Um, but one of them is Premier Protein. So there you go. It's their Protein 2O, which I bought on Amazon because that's all the way I can find it. And Judokcha, which is caffeine-free tea, and that's what I've been living off of. Um, so those are some fun drinks. But I also had the Gatorade Z Protein, which has no sugars and all protein in it and stuff, and it's not bad. It's good. It's protein water, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it is. <laughs> so, hooray! So we're starting that on the 10th. I will have no solid food at all. I will be a little baby. Yeah. The next book I read was The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. And yes, I know, there's a Disney Plus show for it. But I read the book and I don't have Disney Plus and I'm never getting Disney Plus, all right? All right? Anyway, this was cute. I was disappointed in the ending though uh with a reveal of one of the characters because i really thought we were actually going to get little person representation in this and we did not because there's a character who is notoriously small and also like a little shit and i love her <laughs> she's just like the nastiest little thing and reminds me of when i was a child and i really thought they that this was a little person even in the drawing it kind of makes her I mean, she's she's the smallest. That's what they all say. She's only a few feet tall. And I thought that's what he was trying to convey. But it's not. So, fine. There are some really cool characters in this. I did feel like it kind of dragged on a little bit. It's a chunk for a middle grade. Like, this book is, like, what, almost 500 pages? It's really close to 500 pages long. And it's huge. And it's not, like, big print either. Like, it's small print. I don't think you can see. Come on, there you go. Not that you can really tell that way. But normally middle grades are always published a little bit bigger font size and stuff, but this was not. And this is this is a heckin' chunk book. But I did really like it. I liked that we were figuring out some of the puzzles together with kids. Um, so it was a fun little mystery. I don't know if I'll continue on with it, just because I felt like it wrapped up really, really nicely. And also I don't read middle grade all that often, but if you've read the rest of the series, tell me if I should keep going or not. Um, I just don't know if I'll get to it in time. I did then watch the trailer. I'm not impressed. There was quite a lot of change in that that gives away so many of the mysteries that you have here. So I'm not impressed with that trailer, at least, because the trailer gives away one of the huge twists. What the hell? Whatever. I realize I, I have this. I should show you show you this stuff. So the night before my surgery, I have to bathe myself in this antiseptic, antimicrobial skin cleanser from Hibiclens. Hibiclens. Hibis Hibiclens. I don't know. But I have to use this. You must rub everywhere. And then they're gonna do it again to you at the hospital. So I'm like, I don't know why they make me do it, but I got a little fun biohazard bag now though. I can use that for stuff in the future. Spoopy times. That's the sad thing is that I'm doing this in October, my favorite month of the year. And I'm gonna be bedridden for a lot of it and not be able to eat candy and <laughs> not have all my Halloween spoopy time fun. <laughs> but yeah, so the day of, uh, the night before I'll be doing that, day of, we'll get up. We have to be at the hospital at 9.30, cause so my surgery's at 12.30, so we have to be there three hours in advance. And I will be taking some fun anesthesia. So I'm hoping that if my dad's the one who's taking me to the hospital, I'm kind of hoping he sticks around just to film me drugged up because drugged up Q is very weird. <laughs> drugged up Q sees things. <laughs> Anyone knows the very old, old videos of Q after she was in a car accident and was on a lot of painkillers. It's a fun time. We'll do that and then the surgery will take an hour. They said one to two hours. Originally my doctor was like, oh, it takes a half hour. And I'm like reading more and then yesterday, or not yesterday, but the day I went to pre-op admission, she's like, oh, okay, it takes like one to two hours to do. It's laparoscopic. So I'm not gonna have like huge gashy scars or anything. This is one of the longest recaps I've done. So the last book that I read was You Have a Match by Emma Lord. And I love Emma Lord. Her writing is great. 
Tweet Cute was fantastic last year. Other people are not enjoying this one as much, but I actually like this one a little bit more than Tweet Cute. Well, no, no, I don't. I like them fairly equally, but I definitely enjoyed this book. We have the story of a girl who takes like a 23andMe kind of test and discovers she has a full-blooded sister somewhere and has never known this. Her parents have never told her any of this. And it's this big mystery and they meet up together and they go to this summer camp because the, the sister is like a camp counselor there and she's going to meet her and investigate while also taking SAT courses and stuff that she doesn't want to do. And she's also a really cool photographer and stuff. And lo and behold, her best friend, who she also has a horrible crush on, is there as well in kitchen staff. And he's the whole reason that this happened because he was trying to find his Filipino family because he's adopted. And um, there was a BEI, the big embarrassing incident of where they like almost kissed and then she really, then something happened and they never talked about it again and things are awkward and stuff between them and he's giving her weird signals but like also she's always hearing from her friends that oh no he doesn't like you at all he said that um and you know he thinks of you as a sister and so she's trying to get over him but it's weird and stuff but i i really really enjoyed this i like the contrasting sibling relationship here and a lot of other things that the book was saying and i just i really really liked it i liked it a whole lot and it's fun and a good contemporary book. It's a little bit harder hitting than Tweet Cute was, which may be why people didn't like it as much, but I, I liked it. We had some good blow ups and some good, really good moments in the mudslide thing kind of happening. So there, there's a lot, a lot of things. I just don't want to tell you everything. This is why I'm really bad at doing recaps because I don't want to tell you anything about these books. That was the last book that I read, and I can't think of anything else to tell you guys about my surgery. So if you have questions about the surgery, about bariatric surgery in general or anything, leave them down below. What did you guys read in September? Put that down below as well. And you can contact me on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, when they're working. Good times there. And check out my Kofi page to support me as a content creator. You can also pre-order my book. By the way, I didn't mention it at all, but it's just a proof copy. Fall of the Astronom comes out October 10th. Yeah, October 10th, the first day of my liquid diet. But Fall of the Astronom is coming out. Look at this heck and chunk. Heck and chunk. This baby's 500 pages and I wrote them all. Um, but it is the finale of my series. It's out. Yes, Kickstarter rewards are still being processed. It's taking a bit longer because people that I'm working with for like the box sets and stuff are now causing me a lot of headaches. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but I swear it's coming. I'm gonna make it happen even if I have to like cancel all of this stuff and just hand make box sets. I will. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we won't go into that detail. But yes, follow this random. You can pre-order on Amazon right now the ebook and October 10th you can actually pre-order the physical paperback on my Kofi page because Amazon doesn't let you pre-order it as a paperback. I don't know why, but it will be available there. But, you know, more money goes to me, the creator, on Kofi. Don't support Amazon, even though they're the ones who print the book. But what else is an indie person going to do, huh? Don't say Ingram Sparks. All right, cuties. I'm delirious now. We're going to go away. Bye. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Another book that was from the Fee TBR that went on to my TBR was The Name of the Wind by Prep. We're good. Puppy? Big puppy. Someone's not happy outside. So, stop talking to me. Hush.